Nearly 300 music students in northern New York have a sharper insight into gospel music after learning lively lessons from an esteemed visitor at their school. Dr. Raymond Wise began his gospel career at the age of three by singing with his family group in Baltimore, Maryland. Through the years, he's turned his passion for gospel into a spiritual, artistic, and academic vocation. He directs choirs around the world, composes and arranges songs, and serves as a professor and choral director at Indiana University. In 2022, he was invited as the guest conductor for the Candlelight Concert at SUNY Potsdam's Crane School of Music. That's where I caught up with him for a chat about the gospel music he shared with students of performance and music education. Dr. Wise, what is joyful for you about composing? The one thing that I, I appreciate just about life um, is the ability to create. And um, to be able to compose gives me the opportunity to create, uh, to bring forth um, some story or some idea that's in my heart that I can then share with someone else. And how about the challenges? What's challenging about composing? The challenge of composing is trying to create something that will speak to those who will listen. Um, as a composer, I advocate what I call intent-based composition, where you're always trying to create something with an intent to speak or have a certain affect. So the challenge is, is to determine who the audience is, what will that thing be that speaks life or speaks or builds others, and then try to create something that will speak. You composed and arranged a song called Shine the Light. And if we're all really honest, it won't take us long before we look at our world and discover that there are some dark places. But our goal is to be a light. Shine the Light was originally commissioned for a festival that we did in Prague, Czech Republic. Um, many years ago, there was a wonderful uh, African-American arranger, composer, Moses Hogan. And we were planning to do a spirituals festival in Prague in his honor. However, um, he passed. And um, after his passing, uh, we determined that we would still go forth with this festival. So I was commissioned to write a gospel piece for that festival in his honor. piece uh, was entitled Shine the Light, and certainly as we looked at his work, especially having passed, how does he shine? How does his legacy continue? And we knew that by singing and continuing the music, that's how he could shine. So uh, in this particular piece, he had just also composed an arrangement of a familiar spiritual, This Little Light of Mine. So it was key to take that spiritual and incorporate that into this song as well. Shine the Light is newly composed material with that spiritual in the middle, and then it ends up with a wonderful, wonderful vamp, a repetitive piece at the end that says, everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. It's amazing to be able to um, sing with Dr. Raymond Wise um, because he knows every little detail of this piece because he wrote it. And just being able to pick out the pieces that are most important to him to show to the audience is um, just a great pleasure and honor to be able to work with the composer. This work gives an opportunity to honor uh, the legacy of Moses Hogan, but his legacy will be honored as we shine and share our musical gifts.
There is nothing that I write about that I have not lived, if you will. I remember writing a, a song entitled Fear Not. And um, I remember some younger students you know, saying to me one day, how did you write a song like that? And then my answer is, because I've lived in moments where I was afraid. So the idea is being able to write and compose gives you an opportunity to be able to share your story and tell your story. But surprisingly, my story is not just mine. There are probably others who have lived my same story and who can empathize or sympathize with my story so that when they hear it in song, it touches a place in their hearts and their spirits that they go, that is my song. And it resonates and allows them to find hope or faith. Well, you're a guest conductor for this special performance at the Crane School of Music in Potsdam, New York. Are you instructing students who might not otherwise get much exposure to gospel music, and what would be the value in that? Yes, I'm so excited that um, as a conductor and clinician, I get to share gospel music literally all over the world with people who do not come from the traditional African-American black gospel music tradition. And uh, many years ago, when I was a student, um, I was told that this music could not be shared because it wasn't a teachable art form. You had to be from the black community to do it well. And that was part of what prompted me to say, I don't agree with that, and I believe it is a teachable art form. So I've spent 40 years developing pedagogy and methodology and ways to, to allow people to access it who don't come from that tradition and finding ways for them to learn to do it authentically and maintain cultural integrity. So it's very significant that folks understand that while this is music that's come from the African-American tradition, it's not just necessarily for African-Americans. Sometimes it's hard to find the syncopation. There's a lot of syncopation within the gospel genre, and being a classical singer, it is something that I don't um, tend to do a lot. And so being able to experience this, it's a challenge, but it's, it's so much fun to be able to feel the syncopation and feel the beat. I enjoy performing Joy to the World because the harmonies, it, they're golden. And all of the changes, we go from singing almost like classically gospel to like almost new age in, in a second. And it's really cool. The primary thing is that this is a music of hope. It's a music of survival. It is a music of people who have struggled through hardship, but made it, and they celebrate. So you'll hear often in gospel music where there is struggle, and there, uh, people are allowed to release their struggle and their pain. But then after releasing, they can relate with their community, both horizontally and relate with their God. But ultimately, they celebrate and rejoice. So it's so important that in this day, we just don't come and make music and feel like it's done, but make music that gives us a space to release, to connect and relate to what we're doing and what we're going through, but then ultimately find joy and celebration on the other side. The Crane Candlelight Concert, Let It Shine, will be broadcast several times on Mountain Lake PBS this holiday season, premiering on Monday, December 19th at 8 p.m. Viewers may enjoy the show on Christmas Eve at 9 p.m. and Christmas Day at 2.30. You may also view the concert on our YouTube channel. 
Spotlight is supported by the Glenn and Carol Pearsall Adirondack Foundation, dedicated to improving the quality of life for year-round residents of the Adirondack Park.